experimenter seeing here is walking the dog Echo in a large circle. When they reach the halfway point, the experimenter lets Echo see him place a treat on the ground. Once the two have completed the circle, the experimenter sends Echo to retrieve the treat. Notice that even though there are no visual cues indicating the exact location of the food, Echo takes the shortest path to the treat. Since there are no local cues to mark the treat's location, Echo must have learned that particular location in relation to distant visual cues. The second kind of navigation, called cue navigation, uses an object as a landmark. The cue can be approached or avoided. This fawn is a cue for the camera operator, who is following its movements with the camera. The doe is a cue for the fawn, which it approaches for safety or for food. Many cues can be used for cue navigation. This subject walks across a lawn and hides. Her passage across the lawn leaves a scent trail. She has also dropped an object. When Echo is instructed to follow the trail, she does so accurately. And she also finds the dropped object. Even though Echo has never seen the subject or the hiding spot before, she easily locates both. Good girl, Echo, good puppy, yes! In order to study the way that animals learn about space, and in order to investigate how brain maps are formed, behavioral neuroscientists have developed a number of laboratory tests of spatial behavior. One ingenious test, designed for laboratory rats like these hooded Long Evans rats, is the Morris Swimming Pool Test. The test was invented by Richard Morris at St. Andrews University in Scotland. In its natural habitat, the Norway rat lives along the banks of rivers and streams and frequently enters the water to find food and to move from one place to another. Rats are excellent swimmers and propel themselves through the water by paddling with their hind feet while directing their swims with planar movements of the forefeet. Because the rat is a small animal, it is at risk for becoming cold in water, so it is also strongly motivated to escape from the water. The Morris test of place learning, which came to Dr. Morris one day while he was taking a bath, involves hiding a platform to which a rat can escape just beneath the surface of the water in a swimming pool. To make sure that a rat cannot see the platform, powdered milk is stirred into the water to make it cloudy. A rat is placed into the water facing the wall of the pool at an arbitrary start point. It is left to find a way of escaping from the pool. At first, the rat scrambles at the edge of the pool in an attempt to escape. Soon, the rat begins to search other regions of the pool. Eventually, it bumps into the platform and climbs out of the water. The rat is then left on the platform for a few seconds so that it may look around the room and localize itself in its new surroundings. The next day, the rat is placed into the water at a new location. This time, it finds the platform more quickly. If this procedure is repeated for a few days, with the starting location changed each day, the rat soon swims directly to the hidden platform, demonstrating that it knows where the platform is located relative to the room cues surrounding the swimming pool. This is an example of place learning. Once a rat is familiar with the task, it can learn new places much more quickly than it learned the original location. 
If the platform is moved to a new location, the rat will first search for it at the old location. Only after an extensive search will it eventually discover the new platform's location. On the next trial, the rat will swim directly to the new location. This kind of learning, called matching to place learning, can be repeated again and again while the rat learns each new location on one trial. A cue version of the swimming pool task uses a visible platform in the swimming pool. The platform is moved from trial to trial, but the rat can quickly locate it because the platform can be seen. The queue version of the task is learned much more quickly than the place version of the task. is blindfolding this subject for a test similar to the one involving Echo and the Treat. The subject is walked in a large circle and is rotated 360 degrees at the same location where Echo retrieved the treat. Once the subject has completed the circle, she is asked to return by the shortest route to the spot where she was rotated. The subject's accurate return demonstrates her ability to remember the movements that she made while walking around the circle, and her ability to take a shortcut to the appropriate spot. As further evidence of her ability to use idiothetic navigation, the subject completes the first half of the route in the reverse direction.